Hello, everyone. Today, I want to show you how to analyze some data and construct graphs using Google Sheets. Uh, so I have here just some sample Charles's Law data, which is one of the gas laws. But this can be applied to any sort of data that you want to do uh, some stuff with. Uh, so notice here, um, I made a note to myself right here about uh, I want to create four graphs. Specifically, I want to create one of temperature versus volume, one over temperature versus volume, temperature squared versus volume, and the natural log of temperature versus volume, which means I first have to create some calculated data. Now, the good thing about using Google Sheets or using Excel is that it can do a lot of the calculations for you so that you don't have to do very much by hand. So what I'm going to do is here, and I have a column for one over temperature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type equals because that lets the sheet know that I'm about to do a calculation. And I'm going to do one divided by, and I'm going to click the box that has the temperature I want to do, which is right next door. You'll notice it popped up the name B2 for that square. And you'll notice right now it's kind of hovering over. This is going to be the answer that spits out. I'm going to hit enter. And now that answer is there. Cool. Now I could continue typing that and doing something similar. Or if I click back here, you'll notice there's a little square here in the bottom right corner. If I double click on it, it fills the rest of this column with similar data. So if I look at this final one, it says that it is one over B19, B19 being this temperature that's right next door. Perfect, awesome. I'm now going to do a similar one doing temperature squared. So I'm gonna put equals, because I want to uh, do a calculation. Temperature, so I'm gonna click my temperature box, 273. Raised to the second power, so I'm gonna hit shift six, because that's what the caret symbol is. Caret raises to a power, raised to the second power. You'll notice it's popping up a value here once again. And if I hit enter, it is now in the square. Uh, if you don't want to double click, another thing that you can do to fill is you can click and drag and drag down to where you want to go. And that will also fill the column with all the data that you would like. And then one final one I'm going to do equals. This is natural log, which is a specific logarithmic function. Those of you who are in Algebra 2 or beyond may already be familiar with logarithmic functions, but those of you who are not, it's a function. It's, it's like a, you know, an exponential, or it's like a linear function, or inverse, it, 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 it functions. Um, it's one that I like to check because some things do have logarithmic relationships. So, uh, and I do kind of have a hint of what that one looks like. It would be capital L, capital N, You'll notice it's popped up here, ln, the logarithm of a number base e, which is what natural log is, it's base e, as opposed to base 10, which is the one you might be more familiar with if you've already done logarithms. Of, and that says to put in a value, or in my case, I'm going to click the value I want, 273, close the parentheses, and enter. And now I have my natural log there, and again, double click so that I have a column. So now, I have my handy dandy data that I've already calculated. So now I have to make graphs. Cool. So obviously one of the things I can do is I can just click and drag to highlight all the data that I want to have. So I can click and drag to highlight and then I need to insert a graph. So under insert, there's many different things I can insert. One of them is chart, which is the word that Google Sheets uses for graphs. So I'm gonna insert a chart going to think for a second. And that is not the type of chart I want. Um, so now I have a chart, which means now I can edit the chart to be whatever I want it to be. First thing is, because I'm trying to find the relationship between data, I want a scatter plot. So over here, under chart type, it currently says column chart. That's not what I want. I would like a scatter plot. So I'm going to scroll down and find scatter, which will be right here under pie charts. Lovely little scatter plot. Click it. And now I have this very nice little scatter plot. Awesome. It has volume on the x-axis and series means y-axis, so it has temperature on the y-axis. Now there is one other thing I would like to do, and I need to move myself a little bit. Uh, under customize, there's a couple of things I want to do to make this graph look nice and also to include some information I need for my analysis. Under customize, you'll notice there's one that says chart and axis titles. So I can have, here's a lovely little chart title. I can have my horizontal axis label currently says uh, volume 
I'm going to put that it's in milliliters, uh, so I know what my units are, because I should include units if I'm writing on the axis. And these temperatures are in Kelvin. Why didn't it put? There we go. Okay, so we have our temperature in Kelvin. Awesome. So now I have lovely labels. I have a title. I have axis labels that have units. Awesome. There's one other thing. It's here under series. We need a line of best fit. Because if we're doing the data analysis like this, that's what our goal is to get a line of best fit and get an R squared value so I can kind of compare them and see which one appears to be the most linear based on the statistical analyses we are doing. R squared is not the best one, but it will serve for our purposes. So under F series, there is a box that says trend line. And I'm going to click it. And then more options have popped up. The options we want are label use the equation. So now I know the equation for that best fit line and show me its R squared value. It says it has an R squared value of one, which is the ideal R squared value. This is probably a linear relationship because this was just, you know, V versus T. So that would be a linear relationship. Cool. I can, uh, excuse me, will you shrink for a second? Thank you. Please move. Please move. All right. Now there's three other graphs I need to create. So give me a moment to create those graphs which um, is going to be a little bit trickier because now I can't just click and drag because I have um, temperature is in the way of me getting to 1 over T. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click and drag to highlight my volume column. And then there's a, there's a key I'm going to hold. For a Windows laptop like I have, it is to control. For a Mac, it is command. So I'm going to click and hold control or command. And that is what that's going to do is that's going to keep that column highlighted for me. And then I'm going to click and drag on the other column I want, which is one over temperature. And now I can release the command key now that I've finished highlighting. Okay. And now insert chart. That is almost the chart type I want. Do do. So I'm going to change it to scatter. Okay. Under customize, I'm not going to do the labels right now. I'm going to focus on showing a trend line, showing the equation and the R squared value of 0 0.931, which is eh. ideally you want an R squared value very, very close to one. Just, uh, usually, if you're doing statistics, you need at least a 0.95, if not higher. Um, we already have one that has an R squared of one, so I doubt that these other ones we are making are going to beat that. Uh, but it is still important to do all of your data analysis and not finish as soon as you get an answer you like. So let's make two more. I'm going to click and drag to highlight, command or control, highlight the other column, insert, chart, make it a scatter plot, <laughs> customize, series, trend line, Show the equation, show me the R squared. Okay, not bad. Oh, wrong place. I'm, not gonna put that. <laughs> I'm running out of space to put these. <laughs> and then one more click and drag to highlight, command or control, highlight the other column, insert, chart. Uh, that's a line. I would like a scatter plot, please. And thanks. All right, customize series, show me the trend line, show me the equation, and the R squared, 0.983. Okay, so now I have my four lovely graphs that I wanted for this particular activity. Obviously, you may not have to make four graphs depending upon what data analysis you need to do, but I thought that if I showed you multiple tries that you would become more accustomed to how to do it. So again, you click and drag to highlight. If you they are separated by other columns because you did some calculations, Command or control is how you can keep a hold of one column before you move on to the, the other. Insert a chart, make sure it's a scatter plot. Make sure the axes have nice labels, which I did not do for these last three, um, but you should do that. Uh, display the trend line, use the equation and the R squared value. And that is what you need to do. So thank you uh, and I will see you all soon.